Welcome to the Spartans Boxing Show. And tonight we are joined by ex professional fighters Arv Mitu, 100 fights. Hello there. Hi, everyone. Uh, Eastern Pickering, ex British Commonwealth and European Super Bantamweight t- uh, title holder. What a privilege to have him on. And we're delighted to say we're also joined by uh, Miss GB, Natasha Jonas, uh, Super Featherweight um, fighter. Um, and an incredible uh, honour that you've joined us tonight, Natasha. How are we? I'm good, thanks. Yeah, I'm good. Excellent, excellent. Um, uh, as I said earlier, apologies that Lakey can't make tonight. He's on a transatlantic American call, so I don't know what that entails. Um, personally, he's probably on a date, I think, but we're, <laughs> we'll let him explain that another time. Um, just want to start off with a few sort of early questions about um, your career, Natasha. Um, I I was doing a bit of research uh, with you. You used to be a footballer to start with, is that right? Yeah, yeah. For Liverpool, um, like Scouts for England and and, and abroad. Yeah, I went to America University Scholarship. Oh, excellent, excellent. Uh, How how long was you doing that for? Was it it a a couple of years or so or longer? It was a a four-year scholarship, but I got injured to like 18 months, two years into it. And then I came home after that because I couldn't like stand at the sidelines and see my mates on. And I wasn't very academic. I hadn't gone there to, to you know get a degree or anything. I'd really gone there to 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 progress in sports. And okay. obviously, since that wasn't the case, I decided to come home. What What was the injury that you got then? Was it a bad one? Yeah, I tore me into cruciate ligament in my knee. Snapped it on one side and like tore it on the other. Or other. Oh, savage! So, I've I've had that an ACL uh, uh, injury. Uh, yeah. Horrific time. Yeah, no, it was lo- lots of recovery as well after it. But it, I mean, now you're probably out, you know, six months, eight months, but we're talking 18 years ago because I'm that old. Okay. Uh, you're just a youngster, Natasha. You've got plenty of time. <laughs> yeah, you've got plenty of time, man. <laughs> uh, how, long, how long was you, you know, for an injury like that? Like, so, what, six, seven, eight months, did you say? Just like, sort of. Uh, now you would be out for that long, but yeah. for, for me, they, they said it, it has ended my career because the I mean technology has advanced a lot since then, um, and yeah, it was a, a year out and you know a year recovery doing absolutely nothing with like a forest gun brace on my knee. Okay, so you know, Tasha, you know, after that happened, what sort of got you into the boxing? You know, what got what got you into that then? Because if you, I didn't realize you was a um, Football, eh? and, and you played a lot of football. I always thought you was just um, you done a lot of boxing. What got you into it? What got you into the old um, amateur boxing sort of thing? You know. So, so what had happened is after the year of doing nothing, I was like kind of doing things around by like where I live in Liverpool and just getting into loads of trouble, and I couldn't hold down a job. I couldn't like sport was kind of my drive and motivation to do anything really. That's what I learned. And I'm probably as an adult now looking back, I probably think I was a little bit depressed. Um and so I'd, I'd like I'd lost the whole friendship group because I wasn't playing football anymore. Because people don't realise how social like any kind of sport is and being around that environment. I'd gained a lot of weight because I didn't do any exercise for the year. Um so my uncle's got his own karate gym. And yeah. I was saying, like, can 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 I go and use your gym? Should we give me a set of keys? And I'd just go in there, it had like a bag, three weights and a running machine and just go in there, do my little thing and, and go off. And over the road, it was in a bit of a rough part of Liverpool. So a woman that he knew lived over the road and used to like kind of keep an eye on it for him. Mm-hmm. Um, and she knocked over and was like, like, who are you? What are you doing? And why are you here? I've seen you coming in and out a few times. You're always by yourself. What, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm his niece. You know, he gives me a set of keys. I'm, I'm, I'm just t- trying to lose a bit of weight and get a bit of confidence back. And she was like, oh, I've just started a women's only like fitness boxing night in the local gym, which was the Rotunda. You should come along there. And I thought to myself, boxing? Like, no, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to get punched. <laughs> that's, that, that's literally what I thought. But I'm not doing well, that. But I didn't, I didn't say that to her. I'd just be like, oh, yeah, I'll come next week. And then next week I'll come. She'd be like, you didn't come. I thought you was going to come. I was like, oh, yeah, I was busy, but I'll come this week. And obviously I just kept on doing it. I kept on doing it. In the end, I thought, right, just to shut this woman up, I'm going to go to that session. So then the next time she says, oh, like, are you come, going to come back? Did you like it? I'll just say, no, I didn't like it. And, and I, I won't bother. <laughs> and that was, that was 16 years ago. And I've never looked back <laughs> since. So, oh. so what was, was that? So how old was she then? Twenty was it or something? 
yeah, I was twenty one when I when I first went to Rotunda. And within oh, you know, at six months, I think I'd won an ABA title. So, wow, um, kept me kept me there. <laughs> oh, Tasha, going going to boxing, it wasn't your intention then, and you didn't really want to do it then. By the, by the sound of things, it wasn't your intention to box, was it then? No, not at all. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, like I say, my uncle's owned a karate gym, um, yeah. and he's been, you know, all around the world with England and, and Great Britain and represented the country. So we all had to do some form of karate when we were, like, grow, uh, yeah. the whole family has done, whether it's, you know, getting to a certain colour belt or whatever, we've, we've all yeah. done karate. So I okay. wasn't brand new to punching, but it just... Okay. I, I I got into like that team thing where I, I like being in team sports, but then mm-hmm. I suppose I I forgot about what it what it was like to be like you know individual. And now I absolutely love boxing for the fact that I don't have to rely on anybody else. It used to annoy me when I used to play football and like you know the other ten weren't trying trying as hard as me and like we'd lose and yeah. I'm, I'm well renowned, renowned for like taking off my shoes and just throwing them at my own players and stuff. So. Um, it's boxing kind of suited me down to the ground because I didn't have to rely on anyone else. It was just all about what I was doing and the work that I put in. Was there, was was there like a specific story, boxer yeah. or boxers that kind of inspired you to sort of, yeah, I don't know, make make you sort of push yourself into into boxing? Or was it you just really didn't have an interest? It was just this woman that was basically asking you to, to do it. I'd always watch boxing. It was kind of man and my dad's thing. Like we, you know, uh, I remember one of the the first. Um, it was Holyfield and Tyson. It was, and like it was a, like a big event for me. And my dad, had, you know, he paid for the thing on the sky or whatever it was on, and we we sat up and watched it till all hours in the in the morning. And and that was kind of football and and boxing, but sport in general was mine and my dad's thing to, that we did. We both enjoyed it. We both like watching it, and we did it together. Um, so I, I wasn't. I, I knew about boxing, you know, I'd been to, I think, Ben and Eubank. Um, Nigel Ben was my favourite boxer at the time. Yeah, what um, a boxer. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so, so like, I'd always been around boxing. I just never had really any interest in doing it. I'd, do, I'd done a little bit of Thai boxing when I was younger. That was just, like, a, a phase and a fad. And, I, I, like, I stopped doing that. And then, Obviously, when I got more serious in the football, that was kind of the one I stuck to and kept to. Because you you get to like a a point in sports where you like you kind of have to choose, and and I, cho- I chose the football, so that meant that everything else just went just went away. Was there a point where you thought, sort of, a few months in or six months in to start in boxing, and you thought, oh, I'm actually not bad at this? Did, was there like a trigger point or something? Um, so I had my first bout in the Adelphi Hotel. Um, it was a cl- it was our club show, so obviously like I'd never been around that kind of thing. And you know we had Bell, you, the Smiths, Joe Selkirk, Joe McNally, and all that. It, like they're all like I up their opponents. Like yeah, I don't want to batter them, and like we we're all getting on scales. And I was like, oh, I like being involved. I like I like this. Um, I got in the ring. Won me bout in the second round, got wow. out, and some, some bladded fellow was like, Oh, girl, you were boss, you know, I can't believe that's your first fight. And I was like, You like proper hyped me up, and I was like, Oh, yeah, he was like, That was brilliant. That make sure that you keep that up, make sure you do it again. I was like, I will, I will, I will. So I ran to, I ran to Sylvia, who was the woman that put me to go. She ended up being my first ever coach, and I said to her, Look, if, if there's any more of them, put my name down, I'll do that. She was like, look, there's, there's one in a couple of weeks. It's not our club show, but it's in Warrington. I can get you on it. I know I can. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure you put me on it. And then that, from then, then on, I was kind of like hooked. Brilliant, brilliant. So, so you did that You did that for, for a few years. And then uh, uh, is it right that um, I, I think I was reading that you you the, the first female boxer to compete for, for GB. Is that right? You've got that accolade? Yeah, yeah. Compete. Wow. Um, qualify for the Olympics and and win in an Olympics, I think. So yeah, amazing. Can I just can I just uh, slip some in, Tasha? Um, I worked with a girl who um, was was sparring with you a few years ago. I'm at work now, but she's not here. She's having a baby. You know Jade Grayson. Oh yeah, I know Jade. Yeah. Yeah. So she lives in my town where I'm from, 
and she's got pictures on her Facebook that she's probably we're really good friends. And she, she, you know, oh, it's a small world, isn't it? You know, oh, oh. boxing's such yeah. a small community. You kind of get to know yeah. everyone. Like everyone yeah. within it knows each other, even though you might like people say names, and I'm terrible with names, but I'll always know people's faces if you know what I mean. And, and but yeah, we uh, we've done a lot of sparring, and and, and Jade's done a lot of traveling up to help me with, with and, loads and, of boats. I don't think you know Tasha, but she's expecting any time now. Oh, is she? I did yeah, see. Anytime. I did see her put a scan picture up on her um, yeah. Instagram, and I was messaging her saying, "Oh, congratulations!" And I was speaking right. to her, her other coach oh, not long ago. But, wow! Anytime, yeah. Uh, small world, eh? Did you say? Very small world. Hey, you, Tasha, um... you know, like we do. Oh, go on, no, uh, Karen. Oh, no, Sorry, Karen. Okay, all right. Yeah, Tasha, I just wanted to say, how are you getting? How are you, how are you getting on? How are you finding it with all this? Down, you know, I bet it ain't been too easy, you know, um, with the training and knowing when there's going to be a next fight. I mean, I know you guys fight in the bubble from time to time, but what's it like, you know, with um, training, not knowing when you're going to fight, really? Because things are different now, isn't it? We're not, you're not getting very many fights very often yeah. now, regarding coronavirus. I just wonder how you're finding it and how you're getting on, you know. It, it is tough. I mean. You know, we are self-employed athletes, so if you don't work, you don't get paid. And that's, that's you know, financially, that's a frustration in itself. And I'm not signed to any mm -hmm. uh, big promoter, so that means that they're not legally contracted to even get me a date. So I, I've just got yeah. to put myself in the best position for any show that comes up, for any woman that's a roughly yeah. around my weight, that I'm just training like I'm going to be on that show because... Like I, I never wish a failed test or like a, a a positive COVID test on anyone. But if that happens or somebody gets injured or you know that 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 can happen in boxing, so I I will put myself in that that, that position to be able to box if if need be. Um, yeah, that's and, brilliant, mate. That's proper professional. You know, that's what you got to do. Stay in the gym, hundred percent. You got it spot on there. I don't know who your trainer is or your manager, but well, there's give you that hopefully, hopefully they give you that advice that's brilliant you've got to be ready at all times and you'll get your shot your last your last fight you got badly really badly <laughs> well we were all okay, I've got I've got that as a, as a, a an item that I was going to bring your, up uh, Natasha your, uh, your time is going to come Tasha it's going to come in a bigger way now because things happen for a reason do you know what I mean I believe so I believe so I used to think there was a boxing god somewhere that absolutely hated me because there's so many times I've been that close and it just hasn't happened for me, but I believe it's, it's you know, it's waiting, waiting it's, it's for something gonna bigger come. to come. It's all going to come. I've been in a similar position. It'll all come. All you've got to keep doing is just keep doing what you're doing and stay patient. It will definitely come to you. Nice Thank you. Natasha, I mean, you must have, um, I mean, you probably have done loads of these sort of interviews and stuff but um I was, I was just wanting to understand like your your sort of true feelings about uh you know the experience that you had in your last fight which let's be honest I'm not saying it's just because you're on here it was clearly a really poor decision from my I mean from my perspective and us lads we talk about it all the time and I, I think you were robbed uh in my opinion and uh you know naturally uh, by the sounds of it you feel the same I mean do, do you think that there's too many of these decisions uh, going the wrong way um, uh, of late, uh, especially in the last sort of year or two? Oh, definitely. And I don't, you know, people th th like say robbed and robbed. I, I, I honestly, hand on heart, don't believe I was robbed, but I do believe that the scoring wasn't right. Mm. So, you know, there's a lot of things that people watching and, and like, I can have, a, a, like, we've got a group chat in, in Gallagher's gym. And when, when a fight's on, we'll be like, what have you got? And and people do differ. So I, I get, but you, you get, like, odd cards, like the one this the last weekend that's just been. And, you know, you, you're only giving them two, was it two rounds that they gave them or a, a round and a draw? How is that possible when, and, and it's not, it, it got worse because it wasn't even one judge. It was, if, if someone would have said, you know, I personally, hand on heart, believe self about it won, but it 
it was very close. And if it would have went the other way, I couldn't have, I couldn't have argued because yeah. some of the rounds was what you liked. So when you hear the first card, you think, yeah, that's right. Then you hear the two others and you're like, how did they get it so different? And so how can people see it so, so wide apart than what everybody else sees it? Then you add the written, then you add, you know, it, like, it, it, and it's not just here. Like, you know, Americans and, and, and Germany have been doing it for years. So it isn't just British boxing, but we don't want to fall into that category of where you don't want to go there because that's what's going to end up. Or I want to get paid more because I'm going there to lose. You know, that's, that's what it kind of becomes. I don't think, I think, you know, Lopez won, but I don't think one of the sub goal cards against Lomachenko was right either. So hmm. it, it, it just, I mean, don't, I, don't don't know, wrong, I don't know how you correct it, that. I, it, it, I, it, it's subjective in terms of the way people see it. I get that. But like you say, some of the fights that we all watch as fans and obviously you as a professional, you must just be sitting there shaking your head at all, half the time thinking, what is going on here? This is crazy. Well, you get into the mindset of, right, if, if I box this this fighter at this stable, I've got to knock them out. And that's what, you know, that's what happened this weekend with, with Warrington. He's yeah. gone there thinking I've got to knock him out to win, and that, that's well, let's, unfortunately let's what he did. Let's be honest, guys. We saw we saw what Tyson Fury did. Did we see what Tyson Fury did when he got rubbed against uh, Wilder the first time? Second time he put it to bed. So you know, there's a way of doing it, and that is bringing in your own referee. But it's tough. I mean, it's, you know, it's just it's really tough. But like I said, you've got to bring in your own referee, ain't you? Yeah, yeah, simple. It's it's not even that. Like I was I was annoyed that that Harper camp for me. Like obviously we we'd gone into a lockdown in the March, so um, so and I was supposed to fight it in the April the first time. So that didn't happen. So then I was panicking, then thinking, oh my god, am I ever going to get this opportunity again? Am I gonna, ever going to get that fight? Because I'm not a matchroom fighter. So then Eddie finally says, right in the June when everything's you know, kind of subside and right, okay, we're going to have this in the August. So we was allowed back from the June, but then the schools were shut. So I had to bring the baby to every single session. She was there. Yeah. She was oh, giving me water oh, in between yeah. spars. She was, yeah. you know, yeah. I was chasing her down the track. I was, Crazy. you know, and she's not normally that involved. She, you know, I drop her off of school. Mum goes to work. She knows that, but she doesn't, she sees me on the telly. She kind of knows what to do, but she doesn't get it. And in that camp, she was there with me. She was skipping with me. She she got it. She got what mum's work was. She's around all the athletes. She gets it. And then to go through that with her, it was such a special camp because she was so involved. But then to go through all that with her and then at the end, at the end and get the decision that I did, I haven't got nothing back to go back and take to her and say, look, babe, we did it. Do you know what I mean? And that was the most heartbreaking part. Sky was asking me questions in an interview at the end. And I could feel myself well enough because I thought, what am I going to show to me, baby? I didn't have nothing to show to her. And it, it was getting to me. And I was like, <sighs> I did I like he was asking me questions. And in my mind, I was just thinking, what am I going to say? What am I going to show the baby? Because I couldn't show her nothing. And that's the that's the part that the judges don't have to answer for. My next fight yeah. after Teddy Harper, if I'd have won, you know, I'm on double treble the money. They're the, they're the life-changing things that matter. And the judges yeah. don't have to answer for that. They just go to a board meeting and they say, "Why would? Why did you say that? Why did you? How did you see it like that?" Because I, I thought he was more aggressive. Said, okay, that's fine. We'll take it as that, and then that goes away. But they don't get the human aspect of you've changed somebody's life by doing that. Oh, mate, I've been there. Like I said, this is this is one of the main elements as well as being professional as you are. You know what I mean? Because it all comes. Be patient. Keep doing what you're doing. I know I keep saying that, but trust me, it's the only way. You know, it's all about being professional, just, not just the, the the fighting and taking part, but all this part politics. You know what I mean? It's part of being professional. No, oh, yeah. Uh, like in amateur, you can lose one week and the next week you're at another tournament, and yeah, you yeah, get right. you kind of right. bounces off you and you get over it. And but in right. in professional sports, you, you're waiting. You know, you can wait three months, six months. Now, you know, people are out, and the, the the fighters that are contracted that. They, they're the ones that are trying to get out. And then you've got, you know, people on small halls who are, are fighting for shows or tr yeah. trying to do what I'm doing and be ready. And everyone is competing for the 
just in case spot. And yeah. it's it's hard, it's tough. So, cool. you know. Okay. So I was going to ask you on that. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but like obviously with these matching cards and then um, the Frank Warren cards and stuff, I mean, I'm always interested to try and understand how is the actual fights that are chosen for that actually chosen? Is it just a case of, well, you haven't had one for a while, you can have one and we'll draft this person. And I mean, do you have much contact with, with th those aspects in terms of the Eddie Hearns and the Frank Warrens of the world? Or is it just, you'll just get a, a call out the blue kind of thing? Is that kind of how it works? For me, definitely. I just get calls out of the blue. I think um, when the board shut the borders, that meant that Harper couldn't fight anyone outside of the country because you couldn't fly people in and they potentially could do that this time and help, you know, home domestic boxers out, but they haven't done. Um, so yeah, that's how I got that opportunity and any others that come, come through MTK because that's who my management team are. So yeah, I, I don't really know the ins and outs of that side. I would think it would, you know, depend on the show, depend on the cost of how, how much that fight's going to put on. Mm -hmm. It cost to put on, you know, and yeah, like a, a balance of, you know, what people want to see. Yet, yet you do what you you always want to see the new talent coming through. You want to see a champion fight at some stage. You want to see, you know, the people in the middle progression. So mm -hmm. I think you you either fit into one of them categories, and the after it's like I don't know that I'm just surmising. I mean, there's okay. there's a number of cards that are coming up in March and April. Do, uh, do you think there's a chance you can be in, involved in that, or is it you just literally got to wait last minute and you might get a call kind of thing? No, no. I'm I, like I said, I'm training like like I am. <laughs> um, I, I I do believe a call will come. To be honest, I think um, I think it has to. Um, whether new. I don't think it'll be with ev someone who people think it will be, but. A call will come and I'll be ready for it. That's yeah, I mean, you see me right. social media. I've been back in the gym hard the last few weeks trying to get some Christmas weight off. Still, <laughs> oh, I mean, Tasha, I, I, I think Tasha, do, you know, um, do you think you you'll get a rematch because you deserve deserve to get a rematch with Terry Harper when you have a a fight that way in polls? There should always be a rematch, in my opinion. To um, for you to settle settle the score, you know, because that one. <laughs> It was a bit, you know. Uh, I mean, for me personally, obviously, I would love a rematch. I want the rematch. Like, there was a lot of promises and a lot of talk made on that night about, yeah, we're going to do it. You know, it's going to be this, it's going to be this, and it's going to be that. And and it hasn't worked out. But I kind of, from like her team and her perspective and her progression, I kind of get why they don't. Mm -hmm. It doesn't help me and my cause, but I get why they don't. Do you think, I mean, Natasha, do you think there's um, a fear factor with you? Because it just seems like nonsensical fights get made that could involve you. And you look at some of these fights and you think, well, what was the point in that being arranged when someone like yourself could be involved in that? Do you think it's because people are looking at it and thinking, too much of a risk, don't want to fight her? Sometimes I think it can be like a kind of victim of your own success kind of thing. And I think... I, I, I am a risk for not very much reward. So, you know, I think when they accept, when, when they offered the Harper fight, I think like Eva Volstrom, they thought Tasha Jonas will be a very good name for Harper to have on her card. And that's what I genuinely believe. So that's why they've said, yeah, we'll take the fight because they thought I was on my way out and she was on her way up. Um, and it didn't work out like that. So now that like they've kind of backtracked a little bit and been like, well, if we well, go there and she loses, what 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 are we going to gain from that? There's nothing that they can gain. But I'll walk away with two belts. Mm -hmm. do, do you feel I'm a little pressure. bit disrespected in that in that light? Very, right? clued, very clued up, anyway. Very clued up. Um, I I don't feel disrespected. I just feel disappointed because you know there, there was there, there there was give match room the due. There was a, an offer put on the table. One, the money went right, which was always the issue. And 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 two, like the fights that were offered, it Terry Harper was never going to be the next one. It was always two and three fights down the line. And that wasn't kind of what what we said would happen. We mm. we wanted then we wanted the rematch, we wanted it then, we wanted it now. And and again, she's the younger from comer, the one that's you know got the 
the, the, the team, the Sky team, the matching team all behind it. So I get why they've done that, but that doesn't benefit me. Mm. What do you what do you think's next for you then? What who who do you think it's gonna be? Or do, do you think you might have to fight a, one or two fights to try and get an opponent that you want that's uh, of a better ilk, perhaps. I'm not sure what you're thinking is. Uh, well, I've, I've always said I'm I'm not going to wait around for Harper forever, forever. And like you know, one of the reasons for um, going a different route was that she has to do a mandatory and whatever, whatever. So it, you know, I, I will put myself in a mandatory position, and we'll see how how important the mandatories are to take. Then um, you've got a great attitude, Tasha. Honest to God, you're right. <laughs> Brilliant, but honest to God. Regarding Brilliant. like anything else, I, you know, I'm naturally a heavier boxer. I, I, I won my first ABAs at like middleweight, I think, and has gradually oh. come down. So anyone between 130 and 140 is very realistic for me. So that's your Katie Taylors, that's your Jess McCaskills, that's whoever. So whoever they are, whoever them champions are, whoever's got a belt, they're my targets. Well, that's, Would that's you quite like- interesting that you say that, Natasha. I mean, could you get a fight with Katie Taylor? Do you, do you think that's a realistic thing or not? Twitter seems to tell me more about anything than anything else. I've, I think a couple of weeks ago it was in the Irish press that I, I'd got the fight and I was like, I was messaging them back saying, really? <laughs> you know, because that's not what I did. Um, we, we, we've had a call and it, it wasn't from her team or anything like that. It was just about a fight. It wasn't about um, the Katie fight either. It was just it was just a, a call. Um, so you know we we'll, we will make we just had the call and then we'll, we'll work out the the, the differences um, and hopefully we can get a fight. I mean, you you'd be absolutely stupid to turn down a Katie fight. Hmm. I think you know she's she's undisputed, which is everything I've ever wanted. She's got all not even one belt or two belts. She's got all the belts. So. You know, she's a um, a, a kind of like a, a, a trailblazer for women's boxing at the moment, especially this side of the Atlantic. Probably Carissa Shields and or, or whoever to be the other side. But for me, I, I, in and around my my weight division, she's the big name, and I would love to get her as a scalp on, on my card the same way Terry Harper wanted me as a scalp on hers. Natasha, do you think she actually beat Pursing? Um, I had a like more convincingly losing the first time um, than she did the second. I still had her down the second, but I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't argue that she won because a lot of the rounds were close. <clears throat> but my point that I made when I, I did the um, commentary for match room is that <clears throat> people were saying, "Oh, she won by miles because she was the aggressor." And I said, oh, "Okay, but when I was the aggressor, I lost." So how does that how does that work? You can't like something one week and then the next week like something else. That and it was the it was the same people and the same judges. So you can't. That's the that's the issue with boxing is that too much bias. It, it can it's it's one week it's something and then next week it's something else or one fight it's something and it depends who's it it's trying to suit depends on what you like. So if you like the cleaner harder shots and the um more accurate, more powerful aggressor, then I win my fight clearly. But then if you like the come forward, pressure on, whatever, then pursuit wins that fight clearly. So you can't have it either way. You can't have it both ways. You have to pick and choose what you like and stick to that. Yeah. Um, it's quite interesting because, you know, when the, when the Olympics uh, happened and, and women's boxing sort of started to come more to the forefront of people's minds and, um, the traction that women's boxing has made since then. I mean, I used to see comments like, oh, women are no good at boxing. They can't do that. Uh, what the hell are they involved for? And some real kind of senseless comments and stuff. But, I mean, what do you put down the traction to in terms of how far, you know, women's boxing has come now? I think, I think with the Olympics, we always knew how good it was at its elite level. Um, we just needed the world to see it, and the world did see it. They've seen the likes of Katie Taylor, they've seen the likes like of Nicky Adams, Savannah Marshall, you know, Chantal Cameron and myself. And they realised how good it was. And now that they've turned pro, people want to see where they go. They want to see the progression. They want to see, you know, 
how, how you develop as a fighter. And I think the, the biggest thing that the Olympics did was give us exposure. And, you know, from that, young girls, I was the only girl in my club for years, for absolute years. And now there's like five, six, seven girls in our club. And young girls watched it and said, I can be like her. I want to be like her. And that's, that's what you need the, the sport to build from the ground up. We got a lot of funding, which meant, you know, we had a clear pathway. Now, you know, you, you win your ABAs, you're on the England kind of pathway, four nations, all them going with England. Then you can progress to GB. That was never the case when, when we was there. We, 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 like, we, we had to like scrape and cry and bang down doors and, and do all of that. But, it, it's there now and, and girls can see that and for the professionals we, we're still kind of half doing that you know we're making a bit of noise about you know we are just as good we want that and that kind of thought process now has gone I remember when the Harper fight was announced out of the hundreds of messages that people had put on there was only one or two that said oh, nobody cares about women's boxing but that was in the very very minority and mm. that's good to see that progression that like we have moved on from that that's a wall now that we've kind of got rid of so now we're breaking down you know equal pay now we're breaking down you know all the other stuff because like that one's kind of done now do you um when, when you're sort of training and sparring and stuff like that do, do you do two minute rounds or do you do three minute rounds I train exactly what the lads do, which is three minutes until I get closer to, like, m maybe, I wouldn't say the first two weeks of sparring, but maybe the next, but maybe four or five weeks out, then I start cutting down to two minutes. Um, and I have I have no problems going to three minutes at all. Um, I, do, I, I do have a problem if the only reason that you want to see three minutes is to see more knockouts, because I don't think it's right for our sport right now. Um, if you want to test our endurance, you want to test our, see our skills for longer, you want you want to do anything else, that's fine. I'm all for three minutes. But if you just want to see knockout for a, a growing sport right now, that's not what, what women's boxing needs. But nobody wants to have the conversation of, okay, if we do three minutes, are we going to get paid the same? Because the answer is going to be no. So then what's the point? Yeah. I mean, Tasha, I mean, would you, would you prefer to do it? If if they were like to get paid more, would you prefer to do the three minutes? You know, you got you got longer rounds and to, you know to clock up more points. Would you prefer to do the, the three minutes? If you were yeah. if they were gonna pay you more, which they should pay you more, because if they're not gonna pay you more, there's no point in doing it. If they Yeah, exactly. But yeah. I, I, I don't I don't mind. If, like I just do what I'm told. So if I'm told to do two minutes, I'll do two minutes. I'm told to do three. You know, I, I remember being an amateur and it was three three twos or so and then it went to four twos then it you know it went and then it's gone to three, three. i just do what i'm told so yeah your uh, the boxer will always adapt your athlete will always have to adapt because you have to abide by the rules if you don't you have to move sports yeah. so it doesn't it does it doesn't matter what i want what i'm told to do is what i'll do what what the rules are is what i'll do brilliant, brilliant. do you see yourself you know in your next few fights it's just going to be uk only do you see it not being any further afield because of covid and all the restrictions do you think it's just simply just going to be here uh, yeah. mtk have got a, a lot of shows you know in in dubai and up and down the country so you know whatever i can get on i will <laughs> like i said you know financially i need to get on a show so whatever i can get on i, I will do and whether that's here abroad whether that's maya i mean i've seen a, a lot of uh, st uh, comments on, on, on social media about people would love to see me knock her out because <laughs> I don't think they like the way she talks but you know whoever is going to give me the opportunity I will take it that's that's the be all and end all I'm not I'm not going to be fussy or picky I'm not going to try and dodge people uh, you're going to give me an opportunity I'm going to take it perfect perfect so um, um, I was, I was going to say to you um Obviously, um, with boxing, do you take much notice of what's going on around you, or do you purely just focus on yourself? Do you would you watch all the boxing, or, uh, or or is it just a case of you too busy to to do that in terms of your own training schedules and stuff like that? No, I do watch. I do watch other boxing. I'm like, you know, I, I follow 
more the the bigger. I don't. I actually don't know that much about boxing. Like, I, like when I commentate, I just say what I see or <laughs> say, you know what I mean. I, like, I don't know that much or no, like in depth. I, I should say, you know, I watched. Like I said, we me, me and my dad, we watched all the fights together. So I, I, I have got that understanding, um, and I do enjoy. I, I do enjoy sitting back and watching and critiquing other people instead of myself. Um, but I, yeah, I, yeah, can I, I do. I do watch it all. Yeah, I do. I like. I watch all the shows. That I watch. Yeah, I do watch it all. But I couldn't say. I, I wouldn't say I'm like hugely knowledgeable about you know further afield or you know I know the biggest American fighters, but I don't know them all. You know what I mean? So I follow all the kind of big, bigger names or the ones that, basically the ones that are put on telly. You're still a fan though, Tash, aren't you? You know what I mean? You're still a fan of boxing as well as a competitor. You know what I mean? You're still, you're still a big fan as well. Yeah. I, 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 listen, I'm a, I'm a student of the game still, even 16 years in. And you never, I, you never, stop, never stop learning. I, I, I like, I, I'm more into like, I watch the behind the ropes and kind of stuff because I, I like the human aspect of getting to know who they are, where they're coming from, you know, and and, and, and their journey. I, I like the kind of, them kind of stories as well as watching the boxing book. Who's your favourite boxer then? Um, the, two, the two most influential boxers, I think, for, for, for me personally, um, is Jane Couch, because without her, we wouldn't even be here. Yeah. So well, she, she paved the way. She paved the she, way. She did. Yeah. And, and all, you know, she broke down barriers that like I, I know Jane very well and we speak all the time. And yeah. stuff that she says and the stuff that's in a book, which is some of the stuff she couldn't even put in, like it's heartbreaking to think that someone this day and age had to do that. And we're only talking about the 90s. I mean, as old as that sounds now, it's not mm. that far away. Mm. No. You know? and I remember yeah. being a footy player and reading the article that she'd, took them to court and won. And, I'm, and I was a footy player that didn't even have boxing in my sights then. And I was thinking, good on you, girl. Like, that's boss, that. Good on you. And then Please. didn't know oh. that all this time later that would come to affect me. Yeah, top lady. The ball. Yeah, uh, top and lady. the second person is Manny Pacquiao. Because I think he's got such a, um, he's such a, a positive role model for the people in his yeah. community. And he doesn't just, you know... It is boxing that he's known for, and that's a skill, and that's whatever. But he's got a wider, and positive impact on other people, and he does a lot more um, positively outside of boxing. So, I, I, I like, like I said, I like the human aspect. I appreciate that. Oh, brilliant! And um, how long do you think you you've got sort of? I know it's a, a bit of a kind of. I will be cautious with the question, but how long do you think you got left? In, in boxing, what, what, what do you see yourself? Do you just see yourself going for as long as you feel you you've got your fitness and you can just you can do it, or have you got a specific thing in mind that you're thinking? No, I, I, I come into the sport with you know goals and targets, and I would love to reach them goals and targets before before saying goodbye for like the, the second or third time. <laughs> so um, yeah, definitely goals I've got to reach, and and while. You know, while my mind can still do it more than anything, I know that my body can. If your mind's with you, your body can do anything at once. Hundred mm. percent. Do you see uh, when, when when that does that sort of day does come and you, and and you do stop? Do you see yourself carrying on in boxing after, like with coaching and having your yeah. own gym and various sort of aspects like that, and bringing bringing other other females through? When I retired from amateur, I went and and done. I think it was like two or three days a week in the rotunda because <clears throat> boxing is is a huge like void to fill. I, I've dedicated my life. It you know I've changed city to live in. I've lost jobs because of it. Of it's been me work. It's been everything for so long that when that was gone, I I actually didn't know what to do with myself. I had me. My little girl, not long after I'd left GB, which kind of filled that void because I was trying to be this perfect mum and take on everybody's advice and, you know, listen to what the the, the, the professionals say and listen to what your nan says who's got line. And, you know, so that kind of filled that void. But then when she was in her own little routine, I was like, right, what do I do with myself now? So I went back to the gym and, and you do get a different, like, you, you get a different feeling being the coach and then, 
you, you're telling the kids things, making it so simple, and like, who only had a thought about that when I was when I was boxing? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I think I'd definitely always be involved in boxing in some form. I'm in like parliamentary groups and everything for it now. <laughs> so yeah, I think you know, there's definitely there's, de- there's definitely space in the boxing world for me somewhere. What, what would you do? Would you would you would you train to amateur amateurs or would you would you train to pros? What would you do or would you just do do a sort of both both amateurs and pros? What what would you do when you uh, sort of finish your career? I think to be to be honest, I look at Joe and the stuff that he does and goes through, and like I finish my ten week camp and that's me done. I can mm-hmm. you know have a little bit of time off. I can go and go on holiday and Joe just goes on to Callum Johnson, then he goes on to Liam Smith, then he goes on to you know Paul Butler, then he goes on to someone, yeah. and his work doesn't stop. And with with my little girl only being five and being so small. I don't think I could dedicate that much time and effort into it um, that you need to be a world-class trainer like Joe. And that's me being honest. I, I don't think I could... He gives that's so true. much, uh, so much behind the scenes that people maybe, don't see, don't maybe understand. When she gets a bit older though, Tasha, maybe when she gets a bit older, you know, might might change, you know what I mean? No, yeah, definitely. I think when she's older and, you know, you, you can get that time away or whatever, then then I, I would think differently. I know, you know, some of the other coaches, female coaches are, are, are in the same boat, but their kids are a lot older. But especially while our man's so young, um, that I, I, I couldn't dedicate yet. that time. You've got some years yet, there, yeah. yeah <laughs> oh, I, but what, then look, I'll chain it up. Yeah, what what will you do if your daughter wants to get into boxing then, Tasha? Do you know what? People always ask me this question. Here she is now. You coming? How you doing? Hello. You <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so people always ask me this question, and I wouldn't push it into anything because I think sometimes if you do a sport that your parents does, there's a, a a bigger expectation for you to to do well and be be better. Totally agree. Um, so my 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 mum and dad, and I'm like me and that I live with as well. They, I was encouraged to be active. And I think there's so many things that sports instills in you. You know, I've learned things from football, learned things from boxing. It's not just the skill of the sport itself. It's the, you know, I'm dedicated, I'm hardworking, I can work to targets, I'm a good communicator. These are life skills that you need. So I will encourage you to just be active. And I've tried a bazillion and one sport and boxing found me. So I, I think... There's a sport out there for everyone. I truly believe that, but I also think that it will find you. I don't think that you, you, you know, I, I don't think you can be pushed into anything because when it gets to them hard, gritty times and you've been knocked down and knocked down and knocked down, and you've got to get your back self back up. If you don't like that sport or you've been pushed or forced to do it, you don't want to do it anymore. So you have to find that within yourself from the love of it. Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely yeah, that's, fantastic. that's a brilliant philosophy. And um, yeah. Tasha, just uh, just going to uh, end it shortly because I won't take up too much of your time. But are you going to watch the boxing this weekend? Who, who are you thinking is going to win? I actually have um, been asked to do some commentary for the zone. Oh right. Um, so uh, I'll be down there watching. Um, I think Josh Kelly, the best Josh Kelly turns up, then he wins. Um. If the occasion gets to Josh Kelly, then I think I, I can't even say his name properly. That's a bit disrespectful, but I can't. I, he wins, but you know, an on form, on top. Josh Kelly wins all day, but he has to be on form mentally more than physically, because we all know how physically good he is and how skillful and how slick he is. But sometimes I f- think on on big occasions, like in New York, he didn't perform at his best, and I don't know whether that that was the occasion or you know the the thing that got to him. And if we get, get through this fight, do you think we're going to see uh, um, a Conor Ben Josh Kelly fight? Honestly, honestly, you would have asked me this question a year ago. I'd have said Josh, Josh wins all day, every day. He's far too good, far too advanced for, for Ben. And after Ben's last performance and the performance before that, I think he's got to be top two most improved boxers in, in the UK at the moment and yeah. is is ring craft his shot selection his you know 
hard, his work rate was so good in that last fight that I think he causes anybody in his division in the in this country problems. He was so good. I was I was hugely impressed. I'm going to ask you one last question. We got Ebony Bridges and 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 that kind of huge social media kind of traction that she's gained, and she's got this fight coming up in in three weeks' time. Um, and, and and no disrespect to Ebony, you know, she's only had the four fights, and no one knows a lot. But do you think she sails through that one quite easily? To be honest, like I, obviously, I see, I do follow Evan, Ebony on on social media. You know, we have we have talks. At, at, Women's boxing is a little bit different to, to men's in the sense that some women are trying to build each other up and we're a little bit of a community within ourselves. So like um so I do speak to a lot a lot of other boxers, but I don't know, I haven't seen many of her fights. I just see what she puts up on social media. I don't know I, nothing at all about her opponent. So I, I, I couldn't say. Um no, I, I, I hope she does well. You know, um, I, I do like her as a person, and I, I, you know, I think everyone brings something different to the table. Yeah. Male boxers, you know, before Floyd was Money Mayweather, he was pretty boy Floyd. You know, he was pretty boy Floyd, and everyone's got their own selling, unique selling point. And you know, it might not be my way to sell myself, but uh, you, you know, that works for you. Do it. You know, Clarissa is outspoken. That works for you. Do it. That you know, no, no one, no one says about anything about it when when the men do it, or you know, if that's what you want to do to sell yourself, do it. That's, yeah. that's not and, my and, way. And, 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 the, and the last thing I was going to say, who who wins out of Paul and uh, Shannon? Uh, I think Rachel Ball wins again, and are probably a little bit more convincingly. Mm. Um, I, I, I rate Shannon. I think she's a, a great boxer, young, young. Um, but I think Rachel's invested a lot in herself in you know the last camp and i think she will again and you know Mommy, I found it. okay <laughs> you can have that okay you can have it, you can have it. put it in your pocket you can have it. so i think um she knows she's at a level now where she you know doing what she did before isn't going to be enough mm. you have to progress now to to that next level and and she's doing that you know she's Getting, she realised that she wasn't as strong as she'd like to be. So she's got a strength and conditioner training. She eats better. You know, she's she's a fit, you know, trim lady anyway. But you know, she she's making the necessary changes that she needs every single camp. And I think that's what you need to do in boxing. You know, you you need to work on what you're good at, but you also need to develop what you're not so great at. And she's doing that. Fantastic. Have you, have you, have you guys, you got anything else that you would like to ask? Oh, she's brilliant. She's answered it all. Brilliant. Enjoyed yeah. it. I try my best to be as diplomatic as I can. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Fantastic. listen, Natasha, we really, really appreciate your time uh, and coming on for, uh, to speak to us at Sporting Area. And we wish you the very best with, um, yeah. obviously, your career and what's coming up. And hope you get a fight soon. And we'll be watching with vested interest. And uh, hopefully it's, it's sooner rather than later that we see you become a world champion because we all believe that you can do that. Yeah. Yes, fantastic. Thank you. Thank fantastic. You. I've just got to say thank you for you know putting us up in a positive light. You know we need that media attention. We need to you know that we need to 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 be you know supportive of women's boxing. You sh you don't have to be a female in boxing. You don't have to be a female. We need the men to get behind us. So we appreciate all the media and outlets and everything getting behind us and and and, and putting us in a positive light. So we appreciate Tasha. it as well. Yeah, Tasha, you're, you're welcome. You're, Tasha. We you're, appreciate you're, 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 you're a busy lady and you get asked to do a lot of things. But you know, in in the future when it it comes up to a fight that you have, um, you know, we'd love to get you back onto here. here. Your, your version of what goes on and hopefully you'll be telling us that um, some you good belt stuff like this? be a, a, a challenge. <laughs> One more thing, Tasha, you're a, you're a top girl and I, w I, wish you all the, I wish you all the best, you know, you're a top lady, I wish you all the best. Enough respect sure. to you. Thank well, you. Tune in, Tasha, nice one. Cheers, nice one, thank you. Thanks, Tasha, have a nice evening. Bye. See you all soon. Bye. 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 Bye.